Okay, everyone, let's go and do some pouring today. So for now, I have six ounces in the... Or just over six ounces, six and a half to be exact, in the furnace. This is the temperature I melt, I'm pour at. I'm pouring at 1090. So that'd be Celsius. And yeah, let's wait for it to heat up, come back, and do a little pouring. Okay, so it's up to temperature now, so it's time to do a little pour. sit for a bit, heat up, get back up to that pouring temperature, and then do the next pour. Okay, so let's see how much it weighs now. But, as you guys can see, there is a decent amount of graphite on the bar there, so it's going to take some, it's going to take a bit of effort in order for me to get all that graphite off the bar. I am just going to put it down, see how much it weighs. So that's 2.58, almost 5.9 troy ounces. So that's what it comes out to. But I think I'm going to swap out the mold now. I got spare mold to swap out just because after a while it starts leave a decent amount of graphite on the bar and yeah we'll wait for the for the furnace to get up to temperature and once it does we'll do the next pour so yeah <laughs> okay and so the second bar comes out to 2.506 oh so that's pretty exact for what 2.5 ounces will get you, but I'm sure it'll change once we, and be just shy once we scrape off, once we get rid of all this graphite on the bars. So that's the next step, and yeah, let's get to it. Let's go do the next step. So before we get to polishing everything, what we are going to do is do the stamp. So, all I do is line it up, put a mat down so it doesn't bounce, because you don't want the bar bouncing around with, on you as you hammer it. it. Leads to tons of errors, and you just give it a nice hard smack. And again, and I do have multiple smacks because one inch stamp, this is the hammer I use. And it sticks to the bar, so that's how you know you're doing a nice deep stamp. And there we go. So it can still use a little bit more. little bit isn't showing, but put it down and make sure it moves with the stamp. The stamp doesn't wiggle on the bar at all. So I know it's in place. And just give it a couple more hard smacks. Now I check it again. at all. And there we go. So that's one done. So that's 
it's nice and aligned now. And that's a double stamp. So that will be remelted, but I'm just gonna pour one fat bar with all of this. <laughs> and that happens with the one inch stamp sometimes. They don't always turn out perfect, but that'll be the one that we came out with. Okay, so my son has soccer tonight, so I'm only gonna do the video for polishing it up and everything on one bar. But, I basically take a bit of polish, put it onto the bar, get a nice clean cloth, wipe it in, just give it a little massage in to the bar. Now, while the graphite's still on it, right away, I don't actually polish it up, but I take my drill um yeah they kind of do that to get rid of all the graphite there's a little bit left there great so now the graphite's removed off of the bar as you guys can see there there is no discoloration there's a little bit of a spot there is though but I also like to go over the back just in case and the sides just quickly to make sure there's no carbon that got on the sides it's a fresh mold Alright, so now we know that there is no more graphite on that bar. Because you use the graphite molds to heat up, it leaves a bit of graphite on the bars. And now we just massage the polish in. I like to start off polishing the top. I do polish all sides of the bars. No shine bright, no tumble. I tried it, I find the finish comes out a bit better this way. So now we have a nice thin layer, it's nice and massaged in. We just let it sit and dry. So once it dries, we'll be on to the next part. Okay, so you can see how it's all dried up now. So we're good to start polishing it off now. And yeah. So you just want to be light, you don't want to put too much pressure. The polish brings everything off of it for, yeah, the cloth to basically just grab. You can see how no pressure, look how dirty it is, then you change the spot. And you just keep polishing it, and polishing it. Until you're not getting really anything off anymore. And then you go to pick a side, you just pick the back, choose something next. But as you guys can see, this is starting to polish up nice. So, I basically do this for about an hour of bar. And it starts to come out like a mirror after a while. So this is about 15 minutes aside. I give it, polish it up twice. And that's basically how beaver bars are made. Then I do the final stamps depending on the weight. That doesn't look too bad, but I think I can make it a bit nicer. 
And I think there still needs a little, maybe a minute or two more. And then I'm off to pick a side, do the back, polish every single side of this up. And you want something microfiber, you don't want to... You don't want to use anything too rough, and you leave scratch marks on the... on the bars or anything. If you use a cloth that is too rough, there are polishing cloths, microfiber cloths, you can get them cheaper and they work just as good. Those cloths for cars and everything, they do work very good. And just from a couple minutes of polishing, you can see how shiny that's gotten. No traces of anything. Some nice ripples. And yeah, that basically sums it all up. I'm going to polish this a few more times. But that's basically the polishing process. In a nutshell. And how to make a Millstax Beaver Bars. What the process is behind it. And yeah, the hand polishing is basically the longest. Because it does take about an hour per bar to get everything all polished up. So yeah, that sums it all up though. Stay positive. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.